Hi, I'm Frank Daly, and this is That Sounds Interesting podcast. Today, my guest is Ray Bonilla, an illustrator and painter from Buffalo, New York, who's painted wonderful cityscapes, still lives and portraits. So welcome, Ray. I'm delighted to have you on my podcast today. Well, delighted to be here, Frank. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me on. This is great. I've had a look through your work uh, online and uh, also on Instagram, and you have some super, super paintings, actually, which I'm hoping to discuss today. Uh, but before we get started on that, why don't we get a little bit of background? Like you, I know you did a degree in illustration and you did a Master of Fine Arts, so maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm originally from uh, Queens, New York. Um, and uh, I studied at uh, a small uh, university up in, uh, in in the western part uh, of New York, kind of like the difference between, uh, I would say, like, yeah, so to, basically the complete opposite of the end of the state at, at a place called SUNY Fredonia. And I um, actually studied um, like new media, like media arts, uh, and um, it was like mostly computer art. And I wanted to go into animation and video games actually and it was at the tail end of uh, my studies there that i had really fallen in love with uh, illustration and animation uh specifically and um so I, I decided actually to that i really wanted to become an animator and i picked um for grad school um the academy of art university in san francisco california uh because um they had a really great they were known for their animation program and uh I had this whole plan set, uh, everything was ready to go, and I went. And after a semester, I realized that I didn't really want to become an animator, uh, which was a dream that actually I had had since, I mean, the sixth grade, like in, in primary school. <laughs> and Yeah, but it's but, uh, interesting, actually. Sometimes you don't know what you want until you know what you don't want. I right, guess. right, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And um, yeah, so then uh, I was lucky that I had, they had a really good um, illustration program that um, focused on, um, uh, that was helmed by, um, a, an artist by the name of, uh, William Mon, who became a really, um, important teacher to me. And, um, uh, uh, Bill, as we call him, was, uh, both a fine artist and an illustrator. So once I got into the illustration, uh, uh, program, uh, they had, um, essentially treated us as easel painters, uh, saying, you know, uh, and encouraged us to, not limit our work to a specific uh, avenue or platform to to get really good skills and then um you know uh, constantly evolve as artists and so um uh, i tried to start a dual career basically as a fine artist and an illustrator so i always worked on illustration things and then um you know in between jobs i would get i would always have a painting on the easel and um eventually i, I realized i really liked painting my own imagery and I was getting a lot more um, of a response from that than my illustration stuff, uh, even though I'd had, you know, um, a, you know, a, a fairly decent illustration career in terms of just work here and there and, and getting notoriety and whatnot. But I realized I really liked um, physical, creating physical pieces of artwork. And so, um, yeah. And so that, that's, that's basically the, the, uh, I guess the last, 12 years of my my career <laughs> condensed into 12 <laughs> seconds you know <laughs> isn't it so much better to be working on what you want to work on rather than what somebody else wants you to work on you know i've always i've always been a very collaborative person you know and i've, I've always really liked working alongside people and i find that as an illustrator I, that's what i thought that was was going to happen and that did happen you know on the best of days um and sort of on the worst of days it was more so trying to um basically create an artwork that would please a client. And that was great. You know, I really liked doing that, but sometimes, you know, I became, you know, uh, someone's feedback wasn't necessarily in the spirit of making a better piece of art that was more effective. It was more so f fitting their criteria of what they wanted to see. And while I had no problem doing that, I realized that at that point, the ownership of my artwork and whether or not it was my image really wasn't uh, something that I could um, really claim for the most part as an illustrator. It was just sort of, uh, you know, I did this in collaboration with somebody else to fit their, their needs. And, um, and so I, I realized that, you know, if I could make my own work, that'd be great. You know, uh, now some, some artists, and I have a lot of, um, friends that are incredible artists that, uh, 
that you know the the notion of creating your own work and generating your own work is really a stressful thing because you don't have any guidelines and you can basically do whatever you want. And so it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you, you go into fine art or you, you do personal work so that you can be untethered, but that untethering also can almost leave you in a paralysis in many ways, you know. From looking at the broad range of, of uh pictures that you've painted and I've looked across all the work I could find uh, uh, that you have online and it seems to me like uh, a lot of focus is on um, cityscapes and people's lives and uh, uh, things that are happening in the city uh, driving and buses and people walking but also something else which is beyond that completely which is the strong sunlight often very low sunlight uh, warm buildings, often orange and red buildings, and shadows, detail that actually bring that into your focus directly onto onto the uh, paintings themselves. So, is that normally a, an approach that you take, or, or what type of approach do you take when you're starting the painting? Yeah, uh, you know, it's a great question. It's um, you know, all of the the uh, subject matter in my um, in my paintings in my work are. Uh, objects uh, and places uh, that are really important to me, uh, and I find that I really can't uh, paint something. I don't. I'm not always. Uh, I'm not necessarily inspired to paint something uh, if it's if I don't have a direct connection to it. And um, so a lot of these, you know, any cityscapes that you see are from uh, places uh, where I've lived in uh, or where I've spent a considerable amount of time in. So a lot of them are. In, in Buffalo, New York, and other ones are in, um, in New York City. Uh, and so um, I have to, usually before I paint something, I have to be in a place, I have to have visited that place a good amount of times, or I've had to have, you know, it, it's um, experienced something that was... Um, uh, Feeling that, a connection sort of, of some sort. Of yeah, place. a connection of some sort. Exactly, yeah. And, um, and so I've always been a fan of light in, in paintings. Um, it's one of the biggest things that drew me to painting. Um, and, um, and it really kind of came from uh, studying of being exposed to the Brandywine artists, the, the American illustrators, um, and their use of light. And so, um, you know, I, every painting that I, uh, that I've done, you know, uh, that light is usually the moment that I've, I've really kind of felt that, that sense, or that makes me feel, you know, that reminds me of, of those places and of that time. And so a lot of it is, is really um, you know, uh, my commute, my morning commute, or, uh, um, you know, at the end of the day, coming back home or, or taking a walk with my wife, um, visiting, you know, uh, walking down the street in my, my hometown, uh, all, all of these types of areas. And so, a sort of feeling at a point in time, I guess. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I mean, you could take any one of my, uh, pieces. I mean, uh, I, I was thinking of, um, I know you had sent a couple of pieces to me, um, that, that you had seen, you know, um, there's this piece, uh, called, uh, um, I think it's a, across the street from mom and dads. And so that, that, that is directly across the street from my mother and fathers. But, you know, I would look that that house, I would look at every single time I would, uh, leave school. Uh, leave leave my my house to go walk to school because my my elementary school my primary school was um, walking distance from my house and I would always see that house across the street and so um, and then I would always see that house you know go, coming back home and it, that's for years and so uh, it it's just a house right but it it means it means something uh, to me of and, course it means yeah. something in your life and right. it's burned into your memory I guess one other item here and that is how you go about painting and the methods that you actually go about painting. Do you do uh, studies? Do you do uh, value studies? Do you do underpaintings? Uh, what do you, what's the approach that you take when you, when you're undertaking a painting? I start off with um, a lot of photo, uh, photo photography, hundreds and photos that I take. Um, and usually at that point, I'm not editing myself, you know, I'm, if anything that strikes me around, you know, in a given area, I'm always taking that, uh, taking a photograph of it. And again, it usually is a place that I've visited multiple times. Um, and I'll usually make a lot of mental notes when it comes to color, 
uh, on it because of course photographs you know when you take a photograph of something and and uh in in a place that you you want to preserve the memory of it's always it's always a letdown right because it doesn't um capture everything that you're seeing and it's really something that captures you know because what you're capturing it with your eyes has m- more to do than what it is that you're seeing too you know uh, despite you know beyond the limits of also like you know color science and all that stuff and what your eyes can see so after that i'll uh I'll tend to do uh a study uh in uh color or uh or if it's really particularly complicated value first uh lights and darks um because that's usually the main way we see uh, uh, uh pieces and also it's it's the um shapes and values are most of um, what determines the success or failure on an aesthetic level in a piece. Uh, and, and those and those paintings, all your, sorry, if you cut across for a second. But yeah, yeah. So many of your paintings have those strong shadows, strong, you know, light and shadow, very clearly defined, and it draws you in completely into the painting. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm. I'm really happy that that that's coming across. I mean, it's something that's. Uh, it always strikes me, you know, it's, it's, um, and it's something that's, uh, it, on a, just on a pure aesthetic level, it makes for an interesting image as well. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's looking for that moment in time too, is, is really that, and that's where you know, the thousands of photographs will, will come into play. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll photograph, uh, a, a, in like a given, like if it's a still life, like a painting, uh, Brian's gift, um, that I had done, you know, um, hundreds of times, you know, uh, and just to get the right light, uh, and uh, eventually, when I get just the right light, I'll I'll then and go go about painting it. Um, and and so after after the val, but it's the valley study that starts off first, and then I'll do a color study, um, usually much smaller than the actual piece, and then I'll uh, with that I'll go in and I'll execute the final painting, um, and um, you know uh, with with that plan in mind. Now sometimes I don't do that. Uh, sometimes I uh, just go straight to the final painting, uh, but within the process, uh, I do bake in those those steps still where I deal with my shapes, my drawing first, then my value, then my color. It seems like you know the subject really well by the time you come to paint it. You've done those studies, you've done the photographs, you, you've looked at the light and the shot, you've looked at all the elements that are in there and, and you've already done some, some studies uh, in, in advance of it. So by the time you actually come to do the painting, you know, I guess, where you're going with the painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's always having, you know, when you're doing something complicated, uh, one thing I, I learned from just studying other artists is that anything that was complicated isn't done, isn't fully realized on the final surface necessarily, you know, and especially as a gallery painter, I have to uh, produce artwork on a consistent basis. And also just for your mental health, you know, I mean, like you can't be just, you know, you know, uh, trying to paint on a piece, you know, over and over and over again for months and months and months. It's just the most depressing thing in the world. Right. (laughs) And so, uh, at at a good, uh, one of my, um, uh, another influential mentor to me was an artist by the name of John Rush. And he had told me that, um, you know, on your final painting, the, it's, it's, you're the last place you're ever going to be expressive and fearless and uh, willing to take risks is going to be on your final canvas. So don't bother, you know, uh, uh, going to the final canvas, do studies if you're, if you're ever worried about that. And then, with that experience, build up the experience, and then with that, go in with um, a certain amount of confidence in the in the to the final. You know, and um, that's a great advice. Yeah. That's great advice if you think about it. And actually, having confidence in your painting, in your strokes, in all all, all, all the um, process that you need to do to do the final painting is such an imp- comes across. You know, you know where you're going by the time you've come to the point to paint that paint. Pay, make that painting. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's it's just like anything that uh, is complicated, right? I mean, you think of, of, of movies or, 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 or when recording albums, you know, uh, there's a, a creative period and then there's a, uh, but, and, and there's a great, you know, the, the, the end product is fantastic and everything like that, but there's a lot of planning that goes into something uh, like that, that a lot of people don't see, but is 
instrumental uh, to to the actual process of, of of experiencing that. You know, of course, in all art, in all art, are all mm-hmm. creative items. Absolutely, there's the, there's the work you have to put work in in order to get value out, and often the more work you put in behind the scenes ends up with a, a, something that appear might appear simple on the surface, but as you say is actually the result of a tremendous amount of work to get to that point. So, um, Ray, why don't we um, have a look at, uh, t- talk about a couple of your paintings actually now on, in your portfolio. Sure. So, um, okay, so first one that comes to mind is called Soon, and it's um, the painting of your driving home on a commute. It looks like you're on the way home from a commute and there's a lovely um, sunset in the distance. But the key thing is the reflection of the other cars of the sunlight. For me, that's what brought me, drove me into the painting itself. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so soon was a, uh, is a, a, a painting that takes place actually in my hometown of um, Queens, uh, New York. And um it is, uh, uh, you know, it's actually, I'm, I'm in, I was in the car, I think with my, uh, my parents and, uh, we were, I was visiting them and, uh, we were going back, uh, to, um, the house I grew up in, my, my parents' house. And it's a scene that I've, I've seen, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, multiple times for years, for decades, ever since I grew up, because it was, it's basically on the way to the train, um, uh, to take the subway uh, to back to, to, into Manhattan. Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, it was at the end of the day. And I, and I remember that because, uh, it's something that I always used to also see, um, when going back, uh, from coming back from, uh, from work and then the sun's coming down. And so it reminded me of all of these, all of these sort of aspects, the, the idea of like, you know, I grew up around that, that area. It's, it's part of the main a drag where all the markets are and things like that. And, um, uh, and, uh, so, you know, I, I, I remember taking a photograph of it and thinking, you know, I got to really paint this thing, uh, because it, it just reminded me of just, um, you know, growing up and, and also just how things change and me trying to preserve that, that one little memory in there before, uh, you know, I, I don't recognize things change all the time. So, yeah. so, you know, capturing it a moment and a memory is, is hugely beneficial, I think as well. And, and of course you were sitting in the car as a passenger right? because you could take the photographs. Yep, yep, while, yeah. While, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier to do that than while, yeah. <laughs> while driving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, there's sometimes I'll, I'll get in the middle of the street and, and take a photograph, but, uh, there were no daredevil antics, you know, for, for that one, you know? Uh, yeah. And, but now, and completely different from that actually, and you mentioned this painting earlier on, which was Brian's gift and, um, it's, um, on the face of it, it's a, a, a has some plants that are actually in the windowsill, on the windowsill, and there's light coming in, cap, ca, ca, just capturing just the the, the 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 plant itself and and the pots that are in in there. But I'm guessing, as you mentioned earlier on, there's a lot of extra memories and items that go into that painting itself. Yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, you know Br- uh, Brian's gift is is uh, the, basically a, a set of potted plants that are on um, uh, the stairs, basically on my walk to to my studio. So every day I see that every time I walk up to my studio, and um, usually at the end of the day, uh, the light is coming through and, and striking it, and uh, the uh, potted plant, uh, the 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 pot that that. Uh, the small pot there is uh, contained a plant that was um, a jade plant uh, that was given by my friend Brian, and I remember it because uh, he uh, handed it to my wife, who my wife my, uh, has a lot of plants and she has a garden and really likes you know uh, flowers and planting and um, and gardening and whatnot. And and so uh, I remember it was a small jade plant with a little um, a white uh, paper flag that said help me on it, you know, cause he's like, you know, I, uh, and he had given it to us because, uh, the plant, all of his other jade plants had passed away. <laughs> and so he's like, if you could just save this thing, it'd be great. And the, and the plan is, is since, uh, you know, uh, 
it, you know, tripled in size and we had to sort of, uh, the thing with J plants is, you know, you can, uh, plant each and one of those little buds, you know, they um, everywhere and that will sort of split the plant and you can grow more jade plants. And, um, from that little jade plant, the entire, you know, our house is filled with jade plants now because of that. So, uh, moving on, um, um, just Ray, just looking at, um, uh, Brooklyn empathy study number one, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, uh, that, that's actually a study of, on a painting I'm actually working on right now. Um, so, so I uh, mentioned previously that I had done a lot of uh, um, value studies in black and white or just a monochromatically, light, lights and darks. And this is a good example of them. They're actually um, uh, mixed media drawings. They're uh, um, uh, airbrush acrylics and uh, color pencils, basically, just in warm and cool grays. Uh, and um, it's just an old illustration technique that a lot of um, movie posters, when they were illustrated or hand done, uh, um, we're done in that uh, in that vein, uh, and so uh, it's a it's a painting of uh, a friend of mine's, a good friend of mine's, uh, Lizzie, um, who uh, and we, uh, she's such an interesting person, uh, and has just a, a wonderful way of summarizing uh, things. And I remember we were having a conversation. Uh, I told her I wanted to do a portrait of her, and so we came over. I came over with my camera. We were just having a conversation. I was taking photographs. And, um, I remember at the tail end of it, you know, her cat just jumped on her, her lap and she was, she was petting her cat and she was talking about going to Brooklyn and saying like, you know, um, and, and going to an art show there and said that, you know, the art itself just absolutely lacks empathy, you know, and it's like pe people in that town, they just lack empathy. And, um, I always thought it was so, such an interesting way, the way she summed it up. Uh, was so perfect and so enigmatic, you know, of of who she is as a person, and so uh, that's why I called it uh, Brooklyn Empathy. Um, okay, and how, and how is that painting going? Uh, working working at the moment? It's it's going well. I'm I'm uh, you know, it's one of those paintings. You know, as you could probably notice on my portfolio, I don't have a lot of um, uh, portraits, but I really like painting uh, people. Uh, I did a lot of it as an illustrator, and so. Um, and subject matter, as long as it is important to me, I'll paint it. So it's, um, you know, so I, I'll do still lifes. I'll do, you know, uh, landscapes, cityscapes. It doesn't really matter, you know, portraits, figures. Uh, and, and, and so, um, it's been, I've, I've put it, I've had a bunch of pieces that I've been working on and as if, if I, for my galleries and, and so when I have a little bit of time, I'll work on this piece. So, um, I'm up to the color study part. Uh, and I have, uh, it's going to be a 36 inch by 36 inch, uh, painting, but I don't, I don't know how much that is in, uh, centimeters. You'll have to forgive oh, me. It's okay. Yeah. I know we use both, we use both of them over here, but oh, actually, okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good size painting actually. You know? Yeah. Um, and actually the funny thing is, um, uh, sometimes it depends on the subject matter. And, um, sometimes a big painting can ha be, have a huge impression on people, but sometimes a small painting can as well. And it can it I don't I'm not sure why there's that difference there, but but um but certainly when you have a large painting, it if it's in a large room, it can bring you into that room completely. Uh it's a great thing you point out. I I think you know, large I I'm wanting to paint you know, what decides a large versus a small? Geez, you know, it's maybe small paintings I know have been known to be very intimate, you know, but you know, I I kind of feel also as an artist, like if you paint something that's intimate, you could paint it large or you could paint it small. You, you know, it's, it's all about the experience that you're, you're making in the paint. There's, there's a, a painter by the name of um, Charles Hawthorne who wrote a book called on uh, Hawthorne on painting. And the, the whole gist of it was, you know, his big thing was that, you know, um, paint something, don't, don't paint something that's inherently beautiful or, or that's, you know, uh, designed to be for people to care about. You're like, make me care about something that's just ordinary. It's like, if you could paint something uh, uh, ordinary in a beautiful way, then you, you've hit, you know, you've achieved a certain level as of artistry. 
That's a great idea, I have to say. A super thought, I have to say, because uh, it's everything has some interest somewhere along the line and it's discovering what that is and bringing it out in the painting is an essential skill, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, because, I mean, there's nothing spectacular about or special about any of my subject matter in the sense that it's they're just ordinary objects, right? And um, I guess my goal is to just communicate uh, on an emotional level you know, my reverence for, for each and every one of my, my subjects. And, you know, when, when I've achieved it, because, you know, I, I don't always, even though I would like to, um, you know, uh, achieve it all the time. Um, I don't always, but when I do, I get such a wonderful response to it. And that's, it's really great. It's, it's just, uh, a pretty incredible thing to, um, have somebody connect with a place they've never even been to or, or much less seen, you know, um, yeah, and in fact, actually, on that very point, because I've never been in Buffalo, I've been in around the states and in New York and different places from time to time, but no, I've never been in Buffalo. And I, and this may or may not be in Buffalo, maybe it is New York, but Pearl Street, mm-hmm. okay, is one of my favorite paintings that you you've made. Uh, I just love that sunlight on the street, cutting down just the front of the bus, and then the outline of the. The buildings traced, you know, on uh, you know, with the shadow on top of them, are uh, from the buildings behind that you can't see. It's a lovely painting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it it, it is in Buffalo, um, and uh, I, it's uh, one of my favorite paintings as well. Uh, I can tell you exactly how that happened. I was driving with my uh, with my wife, and we were going to visit, uh, going to a a, a, a pub. Uh, around the corner, around that area. And uh, I remember we were getting into some sort of argument. Uh, Of course, something really important like, you know, uh, where did you leave that paper? Or (laughs) (laughs) you forgot to buy half, you know, half and half for the coffee, you know. Uh, And um, I just remember uh, turning the corner and, you know, thinking to myself, okay, uh, if I could just make this light, we can get uh, to the pub and then we, we, we can just go visit our family. We can stop fighting. And I just remember stopping at that light, like just hitting a red light and saying, great. And <laughs> now we have to sit in the car and uh, there's this moment of silence. But when I looked up, I saw that light hitting it. And, you know, I just remembered like, it's, uh, you know, I just started laughing, you know, and, uh, and I just thought to myself, like, you know, what are we, what are we arguing about? You know, <laughs> and uh, and I remember taking a bunch of photographs of it, and thinking to myself, how how fortunate I am to have a relationship that I do with my wife, and um, that it's just a, an evolutionary thing, and everything, you know, the person that you go into, uh, you come into life, you know, where you go into a relationship as, is not going to be the same person, you know, a couple of years later, and so um, it was just like a really quiet moment that I had and I always wanted to paint it. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what really Pearl streets, um, you know, about, and, and I just wanted to say, it's not really important that people know what the specifics are in each piece. You know, uh, I know I get asked, uh, that a, a lot of times. Um, but I just feel that, you know, as long as it's, as long as they get something from it, um, that's all I really care about is if I'm hitting the right emotional tone. Of course, yeah. You're you're obviously get something a lot more and it means something different to you because it you experienced it. But certainly for me looking at that painting, I felt um wow, the sunlight is just stunning, I have to say, in terms of the way you captured the sunlight and the shadow. And and that that's that what that was that was exactly what I felt anyway, and and actually in many other paintings as well. If you look at the electric tower, for example, as well, mm-hmm. there's somewhat similar there. That warm sunlight catching, and then the shadow part on part of the building, but also the sunlight. Again, it's it's not just what the subject matter that's there, but it's what's behind it, and you know that's casting the shadow and the sun and where the sun is. It's all those combinations of things that that come to play, I think, in order in that painting. Yeah, isn't it interesting that like uh, if you could pass something like a an old coffee cup, you know, that you've um, or tea, you know, uh, that you you know uh, drink every every day, and then like 
if light comes and hits it, all of a sudden it's completely different, you know? And I think that uh, that's the one thing that really brings me to a, a, that catches my eye all the time is, is, is finding the right light and, and having, you know, uh, I grew up around buildings, tall buildings, you know? And so um, having the, uh, uh, you know, a shadow cast from, you know, uh, from one building onto another building is something that I've seen quite a bit, you know, and uh, it's something that I'm always drawn to. And so it's just, you know, on an aesthetic level, it, it creates interest because it's cutting things up asymmetrically. So it's not making things boring. Um, and that's important to sensitize your eyes to, you know, um, but it's, um, it's that really nice interplay of light and shadow that I think uh, is, you know, if, if you can sensitize your eyes to it, it's everywhere. You know, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, did you actually really see that? And, and, I, and I have to tell them, yeah, I, I, I did. I did. You know, it's like, <laughs> I did. You know, it's, uh, yeah. that's a, exactly what I saw. You know, uh, if anything, it's, yeah. it, it falls short of what I actually experienced, you know. Uh, Just continuing on the theme of, um, of so strong sunlight pass through. Maybe you could talk for a moment about that painting. Yeah, that's a um, a painting that was uh, uh, painted in uh, the New York City area, uh, around Queens, uh, uh, in New York, uh, and um, it was. Uh, I remember I was in a uh, an Uber coming uh, back from um, my brother's place because a, a lot of my family still lives in New York City and. Um, my brother lives in Brooklyn and my parents live in Queens and they're next to each other. Uh, and so I remember we were taking an Uber going back to my parents' house from my, my brother's house. And you pass these, you go through this uh, ma major avenue uh, called Atlantic Avenue. And um, there's all these wonderfully, um, these beautiful old buildings, you know, apart that are now apartment buildings and uh, just, just incredible. And, I remember a light again. It was the end of the day. We were we were going back, and I was having a, a conversation with my brother, and he had said, "Oh, you know, um, we should go visit." I forgot who it was, but it was like we should go visit a person, this person, and uh, you know, because I, you know, you're in town, so we should we should pass through, you know, uh, and so I'll tell him we'll pass through, and that was always like a term that you know I would hear people all the time, like, "Oh, pass through the house," or you know, uh, uh, don't worry, we'll, you know, we'll pass through. And it just reminded me of, of where I grew up. And I remember just taking photographs of, of around that time, just, just with things that were, were striking to me. And I thought to myself, oh man, that, that's, that's perfect. That's, that's exactly, you know, this is the moment where I, um, was talking to my brother in an Uber and I saw that, you know, and, and I wanted to just, uh, capture that. And so that, that's, uh, you know, it's another piece I just got lucky on. This is all, it's all luck, Frank, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so at all, right? But I, I, I mean, there's there's an element of serendipity, not serendipity, there's an element of luck, really, certainly in terms of taking a photograph of light on a particular time, but there's no element of luck in terms of being able to translate that into a beautiful painting. It's sheer hard work. Yeah. So, um, but one of the things I notice here, and it's about that pass-through building and also the downtown run and thanksgiving walk as well and that is and maybe some of the other ones as well actually is that you look up at the buildings and you know if you don't look up you could just be on street level and just see the shop fronts or maybe the doorways of whatever is there and you'd miss so much it's only when you start to look up uh, and see the whole all the buildings like for example in the case of pass through lovely architectural features at the top of that building are very nice or if you look at downtown run for example it's just that lovely window and then the small little windows on top of it actually that uh, are very attractive features from an architectural point of view uh, um, which you, as i say you'll miss it unless you look up it's a really great point that you bring up i i remember when i was in high school um and I had been in, a, uh, was in a, a psychology course that I had taken, um, and it was introductory to psychology. And I remember our first assignment was, 
our first homework assignment was to walk outside. As soon as we leave, left that classroom, that doorway uh, was to look up. And I, and I remember being shocked, like, you know, me, I was 16, 17 years old. And I'm like, what? There's no paper. So, you know, uh, and I thought, wow, this is great. I don't have any homework. And uh, I remember leaving because uh, I, I would take the, the subway uh, to come back uh, to my uh, to my house, uh, to my home. And so and I remember thinking like, oh, let, let me try this out. Let me try this out. And, you know, I realized like, wow, look at all these things and, and to be able to appreciate the things uh, around you and uh, not being, you know, be, being distracted, you know, um, or, or using something to distract me. I, I, I've always been, you know, ever since that, that moment, I've always been sensitive to that. Uh, and, you know, when that's a key I, skill, I have to say, uh, uh, Ray as well, you know, it's, you know, you need to, well, you don't have to necessarily be taught to look, but by being aware of things that are in there and constantly looking deeper at, at various items that are in there, you see a whole world that if you just go about your own ordinary life, you'll miss completely. Yeah, you have to be visually, you have to be curious, you know. I mean, we, as far as I know, you know, we only have uh, one shot at this whole life thing. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm always thinking about like, uh, I always think about time. I always, I'm, I'm always thinking about how how fast it it goes and uh, how what time does to things. And um, you know, the only thing we have are kind of like our memories. You know, and um, being able to look up and 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 observe that uh, and just try and appreciate small moments, I think, is what um, brings me the most happiness. You know, uh, and it's. Uh, something I, I think about constantly, even more so now that I'm, that I'm a first time father. So, um, yeah, of yeah. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. you're, you're thinking of the memories that your daughter is actually making now right. uh, at, you know, a very young age. Uh, even if you were to try and think back to your, of that age, you don't, you don't remember it's in your, it's in your mind somewhere, but you don't, you don't have a conscious remembrance of, of that much really before the age of three, but there is a hell of a lot of learning and knowledge and visual recognition that goes on from day one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I remember I was uh, invited to um, uh, write an article on a, uh, for a magazine called artist on art. And uh, I, want to, I talked about that in my, in my work. I, that's one of the things I was thinking about is, was the idea of like, uh, my paintings kind of stirring a memory in the viewer, uh, that might not be the same memory, but a memory of their own. Um, and I remember my first memory that I can think of was, uh, I was in, I don't know how old I was. I was in a carriage, uh, being pushed by my mother. And I remember, um, it was covered with almost like a plastic tarp that was uh, semi-transparent and it was uh, it, because it was raining outside. And I remember um, the, the drops of water going down, you know, uh, me sitting in and the drops of water going down on, uh, you know, over this tarp. And I just remember thinking that that's what it was like being in a carriage, you know, and being, you know, uh, being young and, just kind of experiencing things on a raw level. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I'm thinking back to that, you know, I, I, I read somewhere else that, you know, the way we remember things is that our mind kind of takes it and then kind of, um, destroys it. It, it actually damages it in order, uh, to every, so every time we access a memory, we kind of change the memory itself. And so I, I think of paintings almost like that. Like it's almost like I'm trying to preserve the memory before it's damaged in the sense so I can remember it as it is, you know. That's a very, inter in, in, very interesting idea as well. And because if you're comparing that to a photograph, a photograph is just taking a point in time, a particular light, but a painting is adding a whole extra dimension into what you're actually seeing. So I guess you're adding, you're adding aspects to, to, um, to the scene in, in some ways. And in fact, actually, all, which brings me on to another painting, which is Tuesday, Thursday. Now, um, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another painting that is, uh, you know, that, that was taken, uh, on, um, it's Tuesday, Thursday on, I think it was on a Thursday, I think. Uh, and, uh, Tuesday, Thursday is an Atlantic of, um, uh, my commute to a university I teach at, um, which is the one that I actually went to, um, uh, undergraduate, uh, studies at the same place I, uh, studied here. It was in, in near Buffalo. And so, uh, called SUNY Fredonia. And I would go, I go twice a week and it's an hour commute, uh, each way. So it's a long, uh, long commute. So I have to get up in the morning, uh, uh, fairly early to make my classes. And, um, I remember it was the, uh, the, uh, the winter and in Buffalo, we have a very long winters and it tends to snow quite a bit. And, um, I remember, uh, I take the back roads, these back roads until I hit this main road, which is, um, geez, I'm trying to remember. I think it's called, it's called Niagara street. And, um, <laughs> uh, I remember taking, uh, was stopping waiting at a red light there and a bulldozer just, you know, cross basically driving across the street. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, you know, that is only in Buffalo. Like in Queens, I would never see something like that where I grew up. And it just reminded me of, you know, moving, moving away from home. And, um, it's, a, you know, it's about a couple of hundred miles away. And so, uh, and thinking like, oh my goodness, you know, I, I made a new life for myself, uh, here. And, uh, I thought, man, this is, you know, I want to remember this. And so I took a, uh, a couple of photos and, uh, later on I, I found the, the photos when I was going through for new pieces and I, I painted it. So. And it works really well. I, I love the composition of it. It, um, it, it works well, I, even though I obviously don't have those memories, uh, but I, I like the painting. Uh, the color, the palette is particularly nice as well. The color of the building and the, the digger itself and the sky behind uh, all work very well together, I have to say. Oh, thank just you. Just one last, sorry, just one last painting, uh, uh, Ray. I know we could be talking for, because you've got tons of work, whatever else, but, uh, <laughs> to, and it's very interesting to hear behind those, but just, um, and this one is by Jim's Place. And um, it's, I like, I really like that car and just a reflection of the sunlight off the edge of the car. Yeah. And then it's also catching the building, of course, and the fire escape and the trees above. But you get a sense of, uh, I don't know, maybe somebody who's living there, possibly. And maybe that's what you had in mind. Right. You know, uh, I, yeah. So uh, Jim's place, you know, it's really interesting looking at these images again, because you have, it's been a while since I've actually looked at them, even though they're on my website and everything. Um, you know, it's, uh, you can see that it's a bit of a, a different type of quality of light. And I wanted to point out that every place, you know, I, uh, I, it, and it's been pointed out to me, but I can see it myself in my paintings, you know, uh, I could totally tell the light difference between a place like Buffalo or a place like, you know, uh, um, New York city and Queens. Um, and this is in Brooklyn and I was waiting, um, to, to hang out with, um, uh, a buddy of mine's really great artist. His name is Jim Houston. And it was the first time we were meeting, we were getting ready to, um, uh, to meet and I was going to go into a studio and we were, uh, yeah, just just hanging out. And I think I was going to go uh, uh, talk at uh, uh, talk to his class, his illustration class over at Pratt Institute, which is um, uh, an art school in in, in Brooklyn. And uh, I just remember thinking, uh, you know, waiting around and thinking to myself, like, this is a, a new part of of my life. You know, I'm just uh, I'm going to be talking at this place, this this well known art school, you know. And I remember waiting, and the sun was coming down, just you know at that moment and I just wanted to capture it. Uh, and, and the type of building is very enigmatic of, of that area in Brooklyn. And, um, and just, uh, uh, the, the way the light kind of bathes it, you know, is a little bit different. It's, it's almost like, you know, it has to cut through the pollution or whatever, you know, the atmosphere, the, the it's, yeah. it's relation to the, uh, you know, uh, the sea and things like that, you know, um, so yeah, uh, I'm actually, and it, that's a very interesting point about the difference of light in different locations. I was talking in a 
previous interview I did, um, I was talking to a painter, um, Maura Carter was her name, and she was a Californian painter, but she had painted in Dresden in Germany for a number of years. And the paintings were, the light in the painting was quite, in the paintings was quite different, much yeah. bluer, I felt actually, compared mm-hmm. to the uh, the light in, in, in California. So it's Absolutely. very, it, and it's the most crucially important aspect of every painting is light, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, at least for uh, you know, at least for me, you know, uh, for sure, you know, without light, we don't really see anything, and so, uh, and it's how uh, it's always been the thing that struck me the most. Um, you know, I I, I was actually uh, a few years back, I was actually in Galway uh, visiting a good friend of mine's, and I remember being struck by the light there, and we were talking about the light between that and 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 uh, Buffalo and and in uh, Queens, and I remember thinking to myself like. You know, I've got to paint this, but I I would have I would need a different palette to do it, uh, to to do of it course. right. You know, because it's uh and exactly and, Com- completely the different palette is what you need for every painting. But right. I can see that you use the same palette in certain paintings because they're in the same location, right? And right. you're getting the same light, so, right? You're getting the same light, yeah. right? A- absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Uh, but you know, it's all about just sort of. Try, trying to do uh, whatever whatever it is that I'm that you're doing, uh, what that I'm doing, I'm just trying to do it justice, and I think that's that's the big thing because I want people to. Uh, well, you're certainly doing it. the paintings justice. There's no doubt about that. I have to say, Ray. Um, so just before we finish up, I uh, maybe you could just give me some idea of the type of work you're you're working on now. I know you did mention uh, uh, Brooklyn Empathy as one of the paintings that you're working on, but. I guess you're probably working on a few different things at the same time. Yeah, I'm working on a couple of uh, uh, paintings for um, um, my galleries at um, uh, at Ben Gallery in, in uh, Denver, uh, Colorado, and I have one in uh, um, My Bomb Gallery in uh, East Aurora. And uh, I'm working um, on a piece for a show at Arcadia Gallery in New York City uh, that are uh, basically you have still lives like the the. Uh, uh, this is a piece called Recharge, which I, I did a small study for, but I'm doing a larger version of that. And I have a city, uh, a Buffalo house, and then um, uh, a uh, kind of a cityscape-ish uh, painting from from New York City. So I, I'm sort of mixing in all all facets of uh, um, of subject matter now. So it, it's really great, you know. I'm and, and moving and doing more portraits. I think is where. Where I think I'm trending towards now. Okay, and 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 we we didn't really get into those topics, but there's so much stuff we only sort of scratched the surface. But it was it's been an incredibly interesting uh, conversation uh, talking to you, Ray. And thanks very much. I really enjoyed it, and I've learned a huge amount about how you go about painting and the the information behind the paintings themselves. So thanks again, uh, Frank. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope hope. Uh, I, I I was somewhat informative, and <laughs> but I'm really happy and really honored that you'd asked me to be on your podcast. And uh, yeah, best of luck with with uh, uh, with this. Well, thanks very much, Frank. Right.